What's up guys, Jay Martin here, investor and host of The Jay Martin Show. And I am on site today at North Star Clean Technologies facility. Now the significance of this is that last year I invested in this company and then I had the CEO on my show, Aiden Mills, to share the story with you. What Aiden told me he was gonna do, why I invested, was that he said he was going to be able to recycle roof tiles into three end use products and sell them on the commercial market. Now, small cap CEOs make promises all the time. Very few keep them. Now, why recycle roof tiles? First of all, roof tiles create a 12 million ton contribution to landfills in the United States every year. You might not think that's very much in the grand scheme of things, but here's the opportunity. These tiles could have been recycled into three end use products, sand aggregate, fiber, and asphalt, and then sold, creating a profitable business opportunity. That's what Aiden told me he was going to do. So when I had him on the show, he walked me through his excitement, the business plan, and then he told me step one was getting the pilot facility up to steady state production. That's where we are today. He did what he said he was going to do. Step two was then to scale to Calgary with a much bigger facility, and that's on track. I love it when a CEO does what they say they're gonna do. So here's my interview with Aiden Mills, a quick catch up. I hope you enjoy this. Aiden, it's good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. I'm happy to be here. Uh, really excited to see the facility. Um, you know, you were on my show three months ago. We're talking to the CEO of North Star Clean Technologies, a company that I wrote a check into. Um, and wanted to get an update from you on site because last time we spoke, I always wrap up my interviews asking the same question. What are the trigger points, right? What are you going to do next, right? What's going to make the share price move up? Now you're in the circular economy industry. We're going to get into that, what that means and how North Star is contributing. But what you told me was that you were going to get this facility to steady state production. Right. And now we can hear it. So you did that, and the second thing was that you're going to expand this pilot project to Calgary, and that's on track. Right. So that's where we're sitting down today. Congratulations. Thank you. It's rare that a small cap CEO does what they say they're going to do on time. Um, so I'm happy to be here. For anybody who didn't watch interview one, yep. can we start there with just the 30,000 foot overview? Um, what is North Star Clean Technologies? Sure. Well, welcome. Thank you. And in actual fact, if you are silent, that's the best sound. You can hear it. You can, you can, you can <laughs> actually hear it. So, so that is the sound of a promise being delivered, which, which, which to me is is like super, super important. We've chatted about how important that is. Look, so North Star Clean Technology Company, um, our purpose is really, really simple. So we take an asphalt shingle tile and we split it up into its individual component parts. Mm. And that's what this facility is doing like right now. So an asphalt shingle tile is about 50% sand, 25% fiber. Um, the older tiles, the fiber is paper, new tiles, fiberglass, and 25% asphalt oil. Mm -hmm. So one of the big questions that you know we chatted about is when will you actually be doing that? A nice steady state production means here that this plant is producing about kind of 10 to 20 tons a day, but it's doing, it's running for kind of four to five days a week. Sure. Five to six hours a day. And like the back end of this facility is actually coming product that is completely to design spec. Mm. It's completely what we expected. And so the most important, of course, is the asphalt. And the asphalt is now off with all our potential customers for advanced testing. Our testing here and our third-party lab testing, as we kind of think about um, the, the broader perspective, look, my, my view on, on, on ESG companies is there's kind of three things that they need to do. So the first thing they need to do is prove the technology works, right? Mm. The second thing they need to do is take that technology and scale it up. And the third thing they need to do is have the plan that says when that scale up works, what's the rapid commercialization to bring that across as many markets that it's applicable to, to do as it can. So it's great to have you here because number one, we have absolutely nailed. This proves the technology works. Number two, we've just press released that we're going to do Calgary, right? So, so that is going to be our scale up facility. And so number two, in my opinion, is like right on track. Okay. And, and the feedback for number three on how rapidly we can roll this out and commercialize across North America 
I mean, the really important part of that for me as a, as, as a significant shareholder in the company now too is the non-dilutive funding. Yeah. And a big part of that is the government and, you know, lots and lots of really good conversations we've been having on the non-dilutive side, both from the government at the federal, provincial, municipal level and with debt providers. Lots of appetite. Got it. Got it. So you're walking me through the input being the 12 million tons of tiles, right? Right. Right. The output, which is a 3 million tons of asphalt. Yep. Equivalent to 18 million barrels, which is... Yeah, it's one. Same as U.S. production. Same as U.S. production. In a day. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So what it means is if you, if people are trying to understand how big is this problem in the U.S., how big this problem is in the U.S. is the equivalent of the U.S. produces its first day of production on the 1st of January and pours it into landfill. That's how much oil is going into landfill every year on the back of asphalt. If you think about it, so year on year, we could have a position whereby, no, You'd have to capture 100% of that market. Are we going to capture 100%? No, but for sure. Yeah. But the, the, the problem is absolutely massive. The environmental problem is absolutely massive. And we believe we have the only technological way to solve that. Sure. Okay. So talk to me about bullet point number three. When you said, when you're looking at an ESG business model, you got to meet these one, two, and three criteria. Yep. And when I'm looking at ESG business models, I really like to focus on number three because it's easy to get excited about an idea that promises to clean up the planets right. and make the world better for humans, right? right? And I want to buy into that. Like, absolutely. Right. I have three young kids. I'm, I'm all about it, right? Yeah. The investor in me needs to be a bit more cautious and act with trepidation. So that's why I need to see, you know, okay, sure, but how are we going to generate cash? Right. Right. So talk to me about your cash model. What's the revenue model at North Star? So the revenue model at North Star has got five elements. So if you think about what we talked about with asphalt shingle tiles going into, into landfills, so, so the first part of the model is, is, is the input to this plant. So today, if you're in, uh, if you're in Calgary, you have your um, asphalt shingle tiles in your, in your truck and you bring it to landfill and you have to pay a hundred bucks per ton to drop that off at the landfill. That's the tipping That's fee, right? That's the tipping fee, right? right? So our business model is to say, Instead of going to the left, we want these guys to turn right and come to us. Come to you. And so we've got five ways to do that. This kind of five, five parts of the business model to think about it. So number one, we will give them a discount versus the tipping fee at the landfill. So anybody who comes to us will get, is, is, got, is going to have an incentive to do that. Yeah. Number two, we're going to build our facilities close to landfills. So we, we don't have to have you them know, drive 100k. Yeah. K, like we literally will be in the industrial area close to the landfill. Sure. So it's like... The turn right, if it's not shorter, will be like 2K or something like that. Yeah, yeah. The third thing we'll do is, one of the things that's really important to suppliers is that they have their guys on the road all the time, right? Driving time and picking up bins can be, that's the most efficient thing to do. Yeah. So we will unload them very quickly. So we will likely have a turnaround time and uh, in the order of about 15 minutes. And then the last thing, and this is again part of the sustainability model and we're working on it is, if we can get suppliers that have ESG criteria as part of their business model, yeah. we will help them achieve that and we will reduce their price, even for the tipping fee further. I want you to touch on what's behind us here because sure. I'm excited to be here, Aiden. Um, I mean, as I said, it's super rare in the, the small cap sector. You sit down with the CEO, they tell you some ambitious plans, what they're going to do, yeah. and then you actually follow up three months later and they've done it. So what's behind us? What are we looking at? This is the uh, North Star Delta pilot facility. So this is the pilot plant that is proving that, that the technology works. Okay. This is an asphalt shingle tile come gets ground up, comes in the front end of this plant. Okay. All our spinning magic happens in the middle. They get dropped off over here. Yep. Get yep. dropped off over here on the, on the on the right hand side. Comes through the plant. All the spinning magic happens, which is obviously you can't can't tell you. It'd have to kill you. <laughs> uh, and then at the back end of the plant, so you can see those there's. Two conveyors coming up. So one conveyor's got fiber on it. Sure. The other conveyor's got sand on it. And then the black tanks through at the back is the is the asphalt. Belt. That's the asphalt. So all three of your outputs right there. I can see the two conveyor belts yeah. plus the tank. Okay. Yeah. And and so this plant is now running at steady state production. And steady state production for me is kind of like it's just it's repeatable, right? So it's kind of running four to five days a week, four to six hours a day. Okay. And it's running at about 10 to 20 tons per day. That's roughly what we're doing, what the production is. 10 to 20 tons per day? Yeah. Got it. So 
that is not yet cash flow break even. Okay. So to get the cash flow break even, we're probably going to have to get to kind of, you know, over 40 tons a day. And by the time we get to the capacity of this facility, I think that's going to be about 60 tons a day. So this pilot project will get there. It'll yes, get to that number. Absolutely. Got and it. and so one of the things that's really, really good about, uh, about operating a plant in steady state is you've just got more miles in snow, right? It just, you know, you start to learn more about how the units are operating, mm -hmm. how the interchange is operating. Like, but now we're getting real information on exactly how to do that. Yeah. So we've said in, in our, in our literature, look, you know, Q2 to the commercial model. I think it's going to be the summer. Might it be Q3 by the time we get this to kind of 60 tons a day? All right. Potentially. But that's what we're looking at. It's kind of in that kind of summer time range to be able to, to, to get this up to. And is, is the barrier to that? Like, what do you have to work through to get there? Is it, was it, it couldn't be, um, securing supply. Is it organizing the workflow and ironing out issues as they come up or what's in between you and, and that number? Uh, so between us and that number is, is workflow and processes and then equipment. And so okay. that's where the knock-on effect comes of supply chain, et cetera, et cetera. And just av av availability of equipment that solves okay. the things that we've identified yeah, that yeah. need to be solved to get to that 60 tons a day. So it's a bit of an iterative process. If we were sitting here in a full supply chain, non-COVID world, all that kind of stuff, would we be able to do it faster? For sure. Yeah. But, but with those limitations, that's kind of why we're saying, look, it's probably going to be, it's going to be the summer by the time we hit uh, it is 60 it tons is. a day here. Okay. And just to recap, you said 40 tons per day, that's cash flow positive estimation. Yeah. 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 And, okay. and that area. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So I, I always like to wrap these interviews up the same way. Yep. What's next, Aiden? Right. I'm a perpetually hungry retail <laughs> investor. I need to know what's going to make the share price go up. So, you know, we're here at the facility. I, I want to walk around after this. I'm looking yeah. forward to checking it out. Yeah. Um, you shared on Calgary. That's on plan. Timeline, cost, we covered it. What's next? I think this year, um, what's really important is for us to continue to describe how Calgary's progressing. So sure. whether it's, you know, the timing of site selection, detailed engineering, starting procurement, et cetera. Okay. Because I think... Although we can say, look, and at middle of 2023 is important. I think this year we need to be communicating with the market about how that's going. Yes, I agree. We, the progress. I think we need to talk about getting this place to kind of, you know, 60 tons a day. Okay. Where, where are we on those two big goals? So if I came out of the year and we have 60 tons a day coming out of here and we have, you know, you know, the, the first, the construction starting January 1st or like, you know, and, and, you know, at the end of, end of, end of Q4 in Calgary, that to me is going to be success. Um, what, what's next is that element three that we were talking about of commercialization. So again, we've proven the technology. We've now got our first scale up. So we're absolutely clear on how to do that. Mm -hmm. The commercialization of rolling this program out across the country. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, part three. And I think that to me is all about um, the customers. So yes, it's about government. Yes, it's about non-dilutive funding. But I believe if we have five-year offtake agreements for asphalt mm -hmm. and plants potentially all across, all across, you know, the, 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 the continent potentially, that to me is the real stepping stone that will help debt come in debt support come in and help governments come in as well. Certainly. So this year, one of the big things to, to do for me is not only understand where we are with the non delivery funding, but also where we are with the strategic customer agreements. Okay. This has been fun. I'm super glad I got the chance to come here yeah. and see it in person, right. get caught up from you, yeah. hear about what's next. You know, I think we owe it to my audience to do it again, three months down the road, check in again, right on those key metrics. Yep. But look, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>